coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, where aware is mosaic. LSA airframes populating flight schools with greater frequency. EAA says amateur built accident rates lower than average for 2022. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our new programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Where, oh where, is Mosaic? The sport plane industry has had its hands tied in regards to designing and building for the future by the promise and broken promise of Mosaic, or modernization of special airworthiness certificates. Once expected and pretty much promised for an NPRM by Oshkosh 2022, the sport aviation community instead gets to sit on its hands for another year and Oshkosh 23. The delay has been damaging as over a dozen significant manufacturers confirm that new designs and plans for updates in their production and offerings have been put on hold while they wait for the real rule in case what they've been led to believe doesn't happen. After all, the FAA always does what it says, right? Okay, the Inside Skinny tells us that the FAA is feeling a little heat on this one and that the July 2023 target now seems somewhat realistic, but only for the NPRM, which will require a significant period of time to allow for comments, analysis, and final decision making. Several elected officials with some aviation expertise are looking into this and we expect the pressure to increase from here so that maybe by Oshkosh 24 we have a rule in place. Maybe. Anne and Sport Plane Resource Guide staff will keep you updated. And after the break, Rotorex Aircraft introduces Dragon Ultralight EVTOL. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some other interesting stories. Rotorex Aircraft introduces Dragon Ultralight EVTOL. Advanced Tactics has teamed with Arizona's Rotorex Aircraft Manufacturing Company to surreptitiously develop and demonstrate Dragon, the world's first aircraft factory-built ultralight EVTOL personal air vehicle kit. The design of the Dragon EVTOL derives in part of the Rotorway Scorpion, a 1967 vintage one-seat contraption gone down in history as the world's first kit-built helicopter. The first production Dragon kits are slated to roll off the assembly line of a new Rotor X manufacturing facility in Chandler, Arizona in the third quarter of 2023. Electric Aircraft Race is on for May 2023. The upcoming Pulitzer Electric Aircraft Race will continue the legacy of the long-standing Pulitzer Air Races first held in the 1920s and is open to, quote, piloted aerodynes of all types using zero-emission electric propulsion, end quote. Given the current state of electric aircraft, the race will be held as a four-day VFR day-only event consisting of 1,000 nautical miles of cross-country flight on a course that will push teams to develop electric aircraft with speed, reliability, and realistic operating requirements. Ara Aero sells electric glider towplane. Ara Aero has obtained the approval of the French Gliding Federation for their purchase of an electric integral. 
The Federation will use their new aircraft as a glider tow for a local club, making them the first to operate an all-electric towing aircraft in France. The electric operation will help to minimize sound pollution and carbon emissions. While such reductions are dandy, the most important aspect to young students and cash-strapped gliding enthusiasts is the cost of electric operation over Avgas-powered tow planes. EAA to hold third annual Home Building Week webinars. The Experimental Aircraft Association is on track to continue its Home Builders Week online lectures starting in January 2023. The new series will be released from January 23rd to 27th. Like the webinars of the last two years, the Home Builders Week presentations are completely free and open to all, but registration is limited due to space requirements. Presentations will begin on the 23rd starting at 11.30 CST before concluding at 2015. Afterward, the sessions will allow for attendees questions with recordings archived and published for EAA membership. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. LSA airframes populating flight schools with greater frequency. With Cessna 172's pricing out at well over the purchase cost of a house, the LSA industry has found its airframes utilized more and more for flight training all across the U.S. as well as the world. The LSA offerings offer some serious advantages, not the least of which is far more recent technologies, solid styling, impressive economics, and solid performance. Early favorites include the TL Sport Aircraft Sirius with exceptional cockpit furnishings and real elbow room, not to mention very good stability and control features. The Cub Crafters line, with the addition of a nose wheel equipped version, is also getting its share of attention, and if you're really on a budget, the Skyreach Bushcat surprised us with an extremely low price tag but rugged features and really nice handling. At least one flight school in the northern Midwest has flown the wheel pants of a Kit Fox S LSA, teaching everything from the basics to tail dragger transition and mountain flying. And a recent test flight of the Zlin Savage Norden suggests that this airplane may be a hit for flight schools looking to do some serious conventional gear training as well as stole ops. We're compiling a more thorough report on the state of LSA aircraft for the flight training community for next year. Keep an eye out for it. And after these messages, EAA says amateur-built accident rates lower than average for 2022. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. EAA says amateur built accident rates are lower than average for 2022. It's not the nicest topic to discuss, but it is important nonetheless, especially since there's fairly good news for home-built enthusiasts once again, as the number of fatal amateur-built aircraft accidents remained under the historic average for the 12-month period ending in September. The EAA warns that expectations should be tempered a bit, however, since this year's numbers show a slight uptick over previous totals. For the fiscal year ending on September 30, the FAA reported 56 fatal accidents in experimental category aircraft, with 39 of those occurring in amateur-built aircraft. That compares to last year's total of 42 total accidents, 33 of those in amateur-built aircraft between October 2020 and September 2021. Of course, this year has seen a rise in overall aviation activity from many pilots as more return to life as usual. 
The EAA sees it as just another impetus to expand awareness regarding a number of its safety-enhancing programs like builder's assistance, safety pilots for flight testing, or its regular safety webinars. The upcoming all-digital sport plane resource guide will be heavily involved in helping to mitigate the accident rate via nearly 2,000 pages of critical sport plane info and constant updates on the science and craft of sport aviation. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.